Caro, news dominating headlines around South Australia around Jeremy Finlayson's uh, alleged homophobic slur and the investigation which is yet to yield any more results. What's the latest? Well, the, the point that should be made first is that this is a word, is probably the worst word you can use if you're going to make a homophobic slur, but it's a word I'm sure you two AFL footballers have heard many times on the football field. And it was probably used during the season in recent weeks. The problem for Jeremy Finlayson is that the umpire reported him, the Essendon players heard it, and he, of course, put his hand up at three-quarter time. It is causing enormous angst for the AFL because they believe they have to take a stand. And they, they should take a stand because they have to stand up and show that they are so supportive of the gay community and they are not going to accept anything like this. The problem, of course, is that Alistair Clarkson got off relatively scot-free. A $20,000 fine is not much in the scheme of things. A suspended suspension, in, in the view of many, was not enough. So, look, Sam, I think Port Adelaide believe that their player could be suspended. And if he is suspended, they're not going to protest. And we'll listen to David Koch in a moment. But I, I think the point should be made that you really hope that if we're going to take a stand like this, and I think we should, it'll be embarrassing because of Clarkson. And I think that if it happens again, players have to call it out. And Kyle Langford, the uh, Essendon forward, was just on radio on Wide World of Sports with myself and Lloyd and He made that exact point, Caro, about making a stand. You know, I'm very close with a lot of people in the LGBTIQ community. And, you know, I've done a lot of work with the Purple Bombers at, at the Essendon Football Club and it shouldn't be any different to any kind of racial slur. It's not acceptable. And, you know, Jeremy's owned up to that. So good on, good, good on him. But like I said, the AFL will deal with it. You have to question the timing of the AFL. This happened on Friday night. They knew about it on Friday night. They've had Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Jeremy Finlayson still hasn't spoken with the AFL. I gather that's going to happen tomorrow with a decision handed How down... How have they not spoken to him? A decision handed down Tuesday night at the earliest, potentially Wednesday. I can't understand it. I mean, I'm not saying he deserves any leniency, Jeremy Finlayson, but I do think that they've allowed this story to drag on as well because they haven't done anything about it. I know it's been a busy time for everyone at the AFL, from Andrew Dillon and Laura Kane down, but that I find that really surprising. I, I, I sit here uncomfortable, though, when you say, Caro, that uh, he, the club feels like he's going to get a week. Like, how, how in the space of four or five weeks can Alistair Clarkson a fair question. not get a week suspension, which I, th I thought he should have? Uh, and then a I player. Agree. Is it because Jeremy Finlayson is easier, an easier p person to rule out and suspend for a week than what Alistair Clarkson? I'm was? not saying the club is expecting it. I'm saying that they they think it could happen, and if it does happen, they won't. I'm not it. sure how they can. How do you feel, Sam? Can they do it, or do they have to wait another till the end of the year, till next year, to come down harder? Yeah, I'd like to have my say on this. Yeah. First, I think it's important that we hear from David Kosh and also Laura Kane from the AFL, who had their say over the weekend. If I put it it's to you, different. it's in the same category as Taylor Walker's racial slur. How would you respond to that? Yeah, I don't think that's realistic. Why not? Um, because I think the benchmark has already been set in terms of the... Um, with Alistair Clarkson's so With penalty, Alistair Clarkson. Which exactly some felt right. I thought was too light. But right. OK, right. but the benchmark's been set. Did you think Alistair Clarkson was too light? I thought it was fair. I think the consistency and vilification for us is how seriously we take it and how seriously we will investigate all matters of vilification on the field, off the field, in the crowd. And frankly, it has no place in society. What was said shouldn't be said ever anywhere. That part is consistent. OK, so Laura's used that word twice there in that grab. That's the C word, consistency. I just want to see consistency. I'm not going to have my say until this Jeremy Finlayson sanction is handed down. But you either say that you care about something or you care about it. Not giving Alistair Clarkson a week tells you the answer that it currently is. But I think that we need to go further, faster with this sort of stuff. Consistency is a fine then, isn't it? has to be. Yeah. Yeah. Can't, can't. A, heavy, a heavy fine yeah. and, and, a, and a big public yeah. apology. And, I Which mean, he's already done, in and, fairness. Yeah, and, and I think the fact that it's dragged on till Monday and it's going to drag through Tuesday and everyone is going to know about this, I, I guess, sends the message already 
that the AFL take this very seriously. And I'm not sticking up for Jeremy Finlayson, but he must have gone... He's had a, Well, I, I know he's had a dreadful few yeah. days and his family. Uh, he has, and he's had a dreadful couple of years. But if he puts his hand up to go out there, Caro, he's got to be better. Far, far too often I see Jeremy Finlayson look like he's a player who wants to give up on the field. And once again, he's let his teammates down off the back of a very successful night. He's got really frustrating body language. His best is as good as uh, any other of the key forwards, but his worst is really bad. So once again, I think regardless of everything that's going on in his personal life, we all sympathise with him absolutely and the club's done an incredible job and his wife Kelly is amazing. But if you put your hand up, it's a team sport and you can't let your teammates down and far too often that happens and it's happened again. Well said, Kate. Is, is there more building behind the scenes at Port Adelaide Carrow, do you think? Look, um, both David Koch and Ken Hinckley spoke this weekend about something that I now completely accept is a handshake agreement with Josh Carr. Let's have a listen. I think Ken's really supportive of Josh developing into a senior coach and Ken is, has publicly said he would love to see him as a senior coach at Port Adelaide. Does he have an understanding from the board that he will be the next man at some point in the future? Not from the board. I don't know about whether Josh will definitely be the next man at Port Adelaide because that's not, not a decision for me. But if Josh uh, is going to be a senior coach at some point, I'd love it to be nothing more than at Port Adelaide. So there's absolutely no discomfort or tension from you? <laughs> it couldn't be anything but further from the truth, Caro, to be honest. I'll be doing everything I can to help Josh get that job if that was my say. So all things being equal, Ken Hinckley will coach this year. He will coach next year and then he will stand aside for Josh Carr. The club is working very closely with Josh Carr off-field. They have uh, Rob Mason working with the coaches, a consultant who is sort of coaching the coaches, but specifically with Josh. The board mightn't have been given that understanding, but Josh Carr has been given that understanding. He didn't go for the Richmond job, Kane. You spoke about this last year, largely because it was pointed out to him, this handshake agreement, that the Port Adelaide job would be available to him when he was ready. The board has been told that Josh is not ready yet. And, and he wasn't ready last year. He's not ready now. The view is they're trying to make him ready for the end of 2025. No, it's an extraordinary situation. And if it works, it will be as applauded as... Particularly if Port could get a flag between now and it then. It frustrates me a little bit because he's as impressive a person in football as you could see. He's an incredible leader as a player and he's done an amazing job. You saw the midfield, 16 to 9 centre bounce with what he's done. But... Back your coaching. Uh, give, give Ken Hinckley the support he needs. He's finally got a key defender or two or three above the height of 6'3". He's hasn't got two had. years. They've totally he's backed got, him well, in. Well, they haven't carried. Back him in. He shouldn't be being asked questions about a succession plan. What if he wins a premiership this year? What if he does something extraordinary in the next two years? Are, are then you're going to guarantee Josh Carr the job? It's ridiculous. What if Chris Scott becomes available? Who, who knows if another really impressive coach is available, yet you're pigeoning and holing yourself into a succession Sydney plan. Sydney did never, it and it worked that, beautifully. Yeah, and how many others didn't work? It didn't work that well, well it, at Collingwood. It's only ever worked with Paul Ruse, as far as I can yeah. see. It worked pretty well with so Simon So back your Goodwin. coaching. He's got an extraordinary win-loss record. They're in a great spot. They've had a great start to the season, highly competitive against Melbourne, humiliated Essendon. His winning percentage in the home and away seasons as good as anyone. He's finally got the tools on. France has had a pre-season. Back him and in. Every interview we shouldn't Ken be talking gives, about this now. Every Who's interview Ken gives, he credits Josh Carr with the work he's done with the midfield. It's one of the great selfless performances I've ever seen by a coach who has been well supported by a club, who is continuing to be supported. They've brought in more good players to boost Can the I just squad. say that the, the one thing that frustrates me about Port Adelaide is they listen to the supporters too much. There, there's a growing fatigue with Ken and there's pressure from the supporters and the old school Port fans who are used I'm to winning premierships. I'm not hearing that from within the well, club. Well, I, I live it and I see it. They, they react to the supporter group too often. So this is... More, to, more than other this, clubs? Yeah, this is to appease a supporter group who have a little bit of fatigue with Ken Hinckley. Hinckley's your coach. He's doing a great job at the moment and until he's not your coach, then worry about getting someone else. Don't go about trying to appease well, he supporters. Well, he somewhere else, you think? Well, I think is he, he the type I know of courage? I think he'll Ken go Hinkley, on. Ken, well, Ken, Ken, well, he said publicly that he doesn't want to be a coach forever. He's actually said that. Now, coaches can change their mind, but he's been on the record as saying he won't coach Port forever and he won't coach forever.